Hey guys, how's it going? This is Jorge from the Big Band Co- Podcast. I'm here with my co-host, Adrian. Today's episode is about the future that never was. So basically, we're going to take a look at, you know, the, in the 1958 to 1963, there was this, this you know, comic called Closer Than We Think. And basically, the guy that wrote these things, uh, you know, took his time to illustrate the future. <laughs> um and we thought it was going to be interesting since this is a podcast about the future. We thought it was inter- you know would be interesting to you know look at this this timeline of of you know of 1950 to 1963 and see what you know he got right, what he got wrong and why. <laughs> 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 um so um Adrian, what what um you know what's surprising to you about the you know the closer than we think comics. I know there's like 40, I mean, there's a bunch of articles that we looked at and like the one from Gizmodo is like 42 visions of the future. And there's like, you know, tons and tons of things that, you know, kind of are real today and the other ones are way off. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Actually, um, to me, uh, I'm kind of like infatuated with this, uh, topic. And more on the lines of the the house of the future. I mean, it's it's the same era, but it, uh, that, I think that was on uh, in Disneyland. Yeah. And uh, <clears throat> I wanted to talk about this because um, we talk about what's possible, and I wanted to kind of like get in the mindset of what these people fifty years ago, seventy years ago thought was possible and, and how they they created that after a, a little bit of research i found out that the house of the future was nothing more than a than a marketing thing for uh monsanto <laughs> because they wanted to create uh the house of the future but they wanted to implement all the everything plastic because yeah. they, they created plastic so that kind of like made me depressed a little bit because it, it's not <laughs> as imaginative as I thought, or as wonderful as I thought. But um, <clears throat> then you sent me the, the, the comic strips, and I mean, it's it's the same thing. It's the that wonderful era of what's going to be possible, what what's the future going to be like. And yeah. uh, uh, what intrigued me the most is things like uh, the Jetpack Mailman. <laughs> I mean, it, it's, <laughs> I think it's very cartoonish. To think that I mean that in the it, future isn't that insane? Like they 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 actually well I mean number one in, in in the comics they don't say at what point you know he he didn't say oh in 2015 or 2016 we're gonna have jetpack mailman yeah. I mean there's nothing like that he's just putting kind of like a stories together but is it an insane to think that at some point in the future people will still be taking mail to your door. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, we still do. Yeah. But, you know, most of the other mail comes through our, you know, through through, through email or, or digital medium. Um, <laughs> I mean, that was never foreseen. <laughs> yeah. That was never foreseen. Even, even like, like, uh, like, like Netflix, um, you know, renting movies. I mean, there's nothing on that. I remember seeing anything about it in the in the comics about movies and stuff like that, but there's nothing talking about, you know, we will be watching consuming, you know, content through the digital medium <laughs> that streamed. I mean, there was never those thoughts. <laughs> yeah, there there there's a lot of thoughts that went there, and that's kind of like the the main reason I wanted to talk about this because it intrigues me that. <clears throat> why why did the people I mean it's it's fun how they envisioned the future and out of all the things we saw they got like one or two right yeah the 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 Apple watch they predicted it 100 <laughs> percent I mean it's crazy how it's the same thing probably yeah. Apple based it off, off of that because it's the same yeah. thing it's a mean, little little square yeah I mean that like the watch I know I know that's an ongoing you know like like throughout time, you know, people have been talking about having a watch that, you know, you have a TV on or you have 
you know, sometimes inter interaction with it, like even, um, you know, even even movies. I mean, they don't have the watch per se, but they have some way of interpre interpreting a watch in your in your wrist that does something. Um, I think it's one of those ideas that you're like, wouldn't it be amazing if we could watch TV on our watches? Yeah. And you get excited a little bit, but then when you actually have it, you're like, wow, this, this screen is stupid. This, the screen is so small, I'm never going to watch one freaking hour yeah. and a half on my wrist. My neck hurts. But, and that's the, the one they actually predicted, right? <laughs> the most stupid one. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's um, like, even the one about the house, like, living in a, in a dome. I love that one. I mean, I was like, when I saw that, I was like, what the F? Like, okay, so let's go, like, go back in that time and think about what people were thinking back then to be, to be, to, to say that they wanted a dome. Get the fuck off like my lawn. Like a, like a greenhouse <laughs> effect or what, what's up? Like, it's like, really? Why, why do you want that? Like, like, that one surprised me. I mean, because but it's <laughs> fucking cool. <laughs> <clears throat> you live in a fucking dome. Maybe they can control the weather. They don't go into detail, but yeah. maybe you can control the weather or um, <laughs> pure oxygen. I have no fucking clue. Yeah, but they, don't, they don't say that. It does look pretty cool and it does look futuristic. <laughs> Stupid, but futuristic. Yeah. Like the Jetsons. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it, it, the, the, the article said that it's... Uh, that's when the Jetsons ended? Ended, yeah. That's when it all, that, when all Between 1958, 1958 when NASA was born, and then 1963 is when the Jetsons were done. <laughs> yeah, that was the golden age of futurism. <laughs> yeah, and, and like other things that they had on there is the, well, number one, the solar-powered car, <laughs> driverless cars. Uh, you know, driverless cars are here. I mean, we don't see them on the streets yet. <laughs> On a, on a daily basis, but you know they're here. We're he we're here there. Um, the solar power cars, you know, even you know, not not. I mean, they're working on those too, but I mean, it's not like electric cars. Um, so I mean, some things are are we're there, um, <laughs> but other things like uh, what is the thing you have on combination bathroom lounge? Yeah, that that. that. The hell is, what the, <laughs> the hell is that? It's a bathroom that you can. It's a restroom, actually. Look, do you ever why Americans call it a restroom? Because we like to sit in in, in there and rest. Oh my God! The so, combination bathroom lounge. Okay, really so the ra so it's your bathroom becomes a lounge. Yeah, that's fucking amazing. <laughs> that's insane. Well, I mean, I think that's more like a like a like a nice to have. <laughs> no, I'm gonna tell you why this would work. Um, there's this movie called I think it's something about forty. Um, it's, uh, it's by Judd Apatow and, uh, it's basically the problems of a married couple in their forties. Mm. I and, know which one it is. And, have uh, you seen it? Uh, yeah. And one of the things is that the guy constantly goes to the bathroom to the with bathroom. his iPod, with yeah. iPad, yeah. with the iPad. We all do that. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, for me that I'm married and I have a daughter, it's, <laughs> it's my only me time. Yeah. <laughs> So this would be amazing, <laughs> having this me time, and having like, like a lounge and everything. That would be amazing. <laughs> I think that that's why it would work, especially in America, because there's there's a lot there's a need for that. <laughs> yeah. Now what what's the other idea? Like the one about moving machines that supposedly are roaming, you know, when there's a catastrophe, supposedly these machines will come in, and to the city, and if people can't move, they'll come in and pick people up and then take them away. <laughs> it's just, I think it's this one. No, there's another one. That that That's one and there's another one. <laughs> you know, like this one, cash registers that understand speech. I mean, we're not there, but it, it's more like understand the Wi-Fi or your connection. But I mean, do we really need this? No. I don't think we... I, I think we're going to go in another direction yeah. right here and it's going to yeah. be better. Snow melter. Man. That's... that's uh, that's very futuristic. I mean, what what I like about these, like, this is this is in the news right now. Yeah. I mean, I'm not. <laughs> we'll see. I've never been a fan of uh, you know making predictions. I mean, I'm I like um, 
more more so it's about helping you think through something than think believing that's gonna happen like this like these things that we're reading here i mean bloodless surgery <laughs> Bloodless I mean, surgery. I mean, what is that? They take your your blood away and then make surgery on you. I mean, it's like, are you you know half the time oh, dead or what? It's what? more of a. What's that? It's more of a. They don't they don't cut you to to perform surgery. Oh, on you. okay. It's like it's like like ultraviolet. Like a, it's like tra like like uh, like the movie from Elysium where the, how they fix people. <laughs> yeah, remember I, that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, like that idea is like wow, like that's cool. Like when I saw that, I was like, oh, that's fucking cool. Like you have your own like little thing in your house that you can, you have an injury or something. You go, you go in and sit there and that thing, you know, puts you together, and, you know, without, you know, getting into your body. I mean, that's like cool. Yeah. Like that would be interesting to think about. Like how the hell you do that? <laughs> exactly. And make it happen. God damn it. But there's, don't. there's some good ideas that they should make happen. I mean, yeah. if, I mean, I, I, I say they should make happen, but I mean, I should try and make something happen. It's just that. I don't know. It's, it's, it's Look like, at that. Firefighting missiles. Jesus Christ, that would be amazing. <laughs> there's a fire. Take I out mean, the there's... missiles. They're heat seeking missiles. <laughs> of course they are. <laughs> They're supposed to fight fires. This one's amazing. I just, when I saw this yesterday, it was just like, uh, oh, missiles, warfare. They're killing animals. I'm like, yeah. I'm not going to read it. But right now that I read it's firefighting missiles. It's amazing. Yeah. Follow the sun house. She was supposed to turn and follow the sun. Oh, my God. I don't want to follow the sun. I want, I want to get it out of my eyes. That's why there's shades. <laughs> no, follow it. I just didn't understand this one. Motopia. <laughs> A pedestrian paradise. Moving sidewalks and cars segregated from the pedestrian level traffic. This was well, circular runways. It's a fun idea in the sense that you don't take a lot of space. Yeah. But I don't think it would work with the te technology we have. Yeah. Like, if just go around in circles until you get enough speed to take off. Yeah. <laughs> And I, I don't think the guy that was, you know, doing these things back then was, you know, actually thinking most, most of this stuff was going to come true. It was more of a, you know, entertainment and also a pleasure for himself because uh, supposedly he was one of the, I think, one of the earliest tech journalists <laughs> because he, he, you know, he had a band and supposedly he... Hold on one second. When Jorge said tech journalist... He did the air quotes. Yeah, the, the you, you quotes. You didn't see them. So yeah, yeah. I you should know. <laughs> yeah, quote unquote tech journalist. Yeah, the reason I say that is because he actually had a band that he traveled in or did like like uh, cross country, you know, traveling from one laboratory to another to actually touch this technology and and play with it, not just uh, you know think about it and sitting on the sidelines and thinking about it, like what could happen if blah blah blah. So he was actually a guy that took his time to. To play with the technology that was, you know, in back in back in the day, um, and he illustrated that stuff. So I think it was more of a, you know, this would be cool to think about. <laughs> this would be think cool to think about and put together, and let's see let's see what people think. <clears throat> Look, we were talking about this one. Um... Was it like two podcasts ago? Yeah, twenty four the daylight thing, the sleep yeah. the sleep one. Yeah, the sleep one. Twenty four hour daylight. And the post says, Why would someone want twenty four daylight? <laughs> Space hospitals. Flying fire engines and office of the future. We have rejuvenated downtowns, urban renewal. And this is kinda like happening, right? Yeah. You know, there was there's there's another one that I read on, I read on another article that's not on this one mm -hmm. that said that in the future there was going to be buttons all over the damn house, all over your properties. And I thought that was interesting because it's like they have, it's like this illustration where from the, you look at the house from the outside and there's buttons all over the damn place, uh, buttons for everything. And I was like, what the hell? Like, what are they thinking about having buttons everywhere? Like... <laughs> <laughs> we didn't think about voice activated or, or 
you know, stuff like that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, it's 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 one of those crazy things from that era that didn't make it through. I mean, the thing would be to simplify, right? And yeah. instead, these guys are like like making it more complex, more buttons all over damn hells. Yeah, it's gonna be because it's gonna your house is gonna be a supercomputer and it's need I buttons. Mean, I mean, there's, I mean, there's definitely like the 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 things to turn on the lights and whatnot, but I mean those are just for the lighting, not for to open this, open that, like doors, I mean open open things on your desk. I mean, you know, that's insane. Like everything needs a button. Yeah, you <laughs> that's wanna, what they were thinking. You wanna open a drawer, just push a button. Push to push to something was the name of the DM article. But um <laughs> I thought was I thought that was I mean there's many of these that are like like this one. They're looking at the mailman, the rocket, the rocket, the rocket propelled mailman. <laughs> That's funny. I mean, seriously. <laughs> I mean, we have, you know, well, Amazon is thinking about drone deliveries now, but it's never been, never. I don't think anybody ever thought about saying, "Oh, we're gonna send our UPS people on on, on rocket propelled backpacks." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean. It, it, it. That's why I found the article interesting and what I, why I found all these things interesting because some things they, they guessed it and some things they were like way, way off. off. Way off. Like even like if it's not a drone, it's like a robot that on wheels now that, you know, I know, for example, in Stanford, you know, in Stanford campus, they have robots that are, you know, take stuff to, you know, from one location to the other. You know, like if you don't want to carry it, they'll take it w for you. <laughs> oh. So they're doing that, but it's not. It's not a, like a drone. It's it's like a you know, four wheeled, um, you know, yeah, robot like a Thingy. robot really. But that's it. Like this one right here, push button ed education. I mean, <laughs> it's like you're sitting in front of a computer. Yeah, now we have our laptops, <laughs> but that's saying that the desk was going to be a computer. <laughs> no, it's actually saying that. I mean. The, the, they were having a problem in the 1950s with uh, overcrowding in schools. Mm -hmm. So this was like the um, response to that, the answer to that, was put them in a classroom and the teacher is going to be like uh, oh, teaching. The, the, teacher's, the teacher's not there. Yeah, the teacher's not there. So they can get a f more classrooms with the same teacher yeah. teaching. Well, they, they, they kind of got that I, some part of that idea. Uh, I think this one's cool. Yeah. I think that they might eventually do this one. Well, I mean, we, we do have it. Like online learning. Oh, yeah, yeah. online learning, but, yeah. Um, but no, but applying it to, to school. Because right now, for me, the problem with education is there's a lot of teachers out there. And some are really good, some are normal, and some are bad, bad teachers. Some even just go for the paycheck, and they don't yeah. care if the students learn. So... Maybe this should be the answer to that, to to getting like really good teachers, and try and just like transmitting to all the schools and and wherever you are. Yeah, maybe that. I mean, but when it comes to education in a lot of countries, they don't wanna they don't want people to learn. They don't. They just wanna make them stupid so they don't revolt and all that stuff. I mean, yeah. it, it makes sense, but because we now have the technology to do that. We yeah. have right now. We have the technology to transmit uh, classes to all the world with the best teachers. We have that. Why aren't we doing it? We have a smart, uh, smart whiteboards, mm -hmm. which is just basically like a kind of like a computer connected to the internet. So we just need the teachers. We have a lot of good teachers. We have Linda.com. We have a lot of stuff. That would be a nice experiment, like grabbing uh, a group. Of people that want to learn a certain skill and just uh, put on a, a Linda a yeah. Linda course <laughs> and just see see if they, they, they learn or I mean they're gonna learn obviously yeah. they're gonna learn what else is on there uh, walking that's machines. the one we we're talking about walking machines flying carpet car <laughs> yeah th th I, I didn't get this one what's the difference between this one and uh, a normal flying car. Does this one have a carpet? Mm. Yeah, 
Yeah, it was just a hovering car. <laughs> this was Jack pa Jetpack Mailman, which yeah. is now email. Highway to Russia. What the fuck? They were gonna make it from Alaska to Russia? I would have been fun. <laughs> hey, let's go to Russia. Okay, let's go. We don't have to fly. This was this is just like crazy. I mean, it, it's it's fun how they thought in the 1950s. Um, it makes sense because of the NASA thing, but how they thought that in a few years we we're gonna be like all over space, <laughs> like space travel. Because they, they do mention a few things yeah. about space here, like space hospitals yeah. and space shit. That's a that's fun to think about, and it never happened. I mean, there's a lot of conspiracy yeah. theories about the, the moon landing and all this stuff, because after they landed on the moon, like 40, 50 years went by and nothing happened. Yeah. I mean, I mean, the, the, the thing with predictions is, again, you know, we overestimate what's going to happen. <laughs> yeah. Um, and that's just not the, the, the truth. I mean, these things are cool to, you know, to, to talk about and to think through and whatnot, but uh, <laughs> I mean... Even I mean, like uh, you know, I, I you know off off air. I think we were saying that uh, you know Bill Gates wrote a book called the business business at the speed of thought, and most of the things he he wrote those I think after like right before two thousand, like ninety five. I think I don't remember, but uh, the bottom line is he didn't foresee a lot of things, and since he is well known, you know people still bang on him because he didn't foresee all that stuff. I'm like. It's 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 you know the the the, th the 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 thing about making predictions is that if you're well known, people will put you down if you don't you know get 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 the things right, um, and that's not really what it's about. The, the the thing it's about is to to think through these things. I mean, just to get people thinking about them and not be surprised when it, some of these things actually happen. And most of these predictions will not happen as somebody says them. It's going to happen. It happens more as, or more so like in components. Um, so that's that's really what it's about. Um, I mean, it, and even it, I think it's it, it takes some courage to you know to do what this guy did. <laughs> yeah. You know, back in, th in that day, <laughs> but like, who who else was doing that? <laughs> who else took the time to to illustrate these things? And and you know, I mean, that's that's un unbelievable. Like like even like today, I mean, there's not a day that I don't see. Uh, predictions about something. I mean, you see these things on Twitter all the freaking time. Tw you know, ten predictions, and companies are making their own predictions. So, so this the, the person who was doing this, the closer from than we think, um, he inspired, you know, a cottage industry of futurists. Um, you know, to do these things now. <laughs> this was that era was, like, really. I think it was really important because. I just proved something I was thinking. What happens if you type in the house of the future on Google? And you get the one of the first... Uh, you get the, the one that was yeah. at Disneyland. Yeah, the one that's... That's the house of the future. Yeah. So, and tomorrow, I mean, it's the house of the future right now. It's something that was created 50 years ago. Yeah. So why aren't we doing... Why aren't we seeing, like, prototypes for houses of the future? How will they be? Yeah. Is that no one's interested in that anymore, or what? Yeah, they are doing it, but nobody's gonna buy that. <laughs> I mean, it's too expensive. Most of these things are very expensive. I mean, Bill Gates, from what I know, his 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 house in 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 Seattle, it's it's the it's a house of the future. <laughs> I mean, but nobody knows because many people have not been in there beyond what he oh, says. Yeah. But he has. I mean, his house is like over a hundred million dollars. Um, and I think it took took like three or five years to build, but he 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 had a hand in that. <laughs> and he's <laughs> but yes, but you know what I mean. I mean these things. I mean people, wealthy people, will have access to these things if they have the imagination and the funds to do it. So every but time these he... things will not cascade to normal society simply because it's too cost too costly. <laughs> but but I mean, well, and, and when people think about you know. The future you usually usually think about technology, <laughs> like electrical stuff, 
like the for me the future the house of the future is not even has to do with electrical stuff it has to be do with sustainable stuff <laughs> i had the other day i asked the guy hey Uh, what's your dream job? If you if you weren't doing this, what would you like to be doing? And he told me, running a um, tech company in San Francisco. Uh, and I told him, well, where I asked him, where where do you see technology in five years? And he was like, I don't know. <laughs> and I told uh, he told me uh, probably VR. The, the Samsung well, uh, people Rift. don't know. And I was like. Well, first of all, this is a guy who wants to... Yeah, but a lot of people don't take the time to think these through. And that that this, that story brings me to this, what we're seeing on screen right now. The house of the future. Look at all of this. It's mostly the house from it's, Disneyland. It looks, it looks like the, the same the same design applied different ways. Yeah, the, there's not a lot of people doing this kind of stuff. Like trying, not trying to guess, but I mean... Telling us, giving us some sort of hope that's gonna be fun in the future or better in the future. There are. I mean, there's like Tree Hugger. I mean, there's a, a lot of websites that publish these things. I mean, they just don't. I mean, if you don't 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 uh, visit them, I mean, you won't know. But there is. I mean, there's a lot of stuff. But why don't, why the don't they show up in the House of the Future? Oh, probably because it's indexed that way. That's more of a Google thing. <laughs> But put Stupid House of the Google. Future in Twitter and you'll see. <laughs> really? Yeah, I mean this index is old. Man. This is this is Google. But um, a lot the 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 more up to date stuff happens in real time. But um, I mean, there's a lot of things, a lot of websites we can visit and see, whatnot. Like you you were saying just the, like five minutes ago that practically the House of the Future is gonna be for people who can afford it or rich people and it's not going to come down to us, right? But what about if the basic income works? I mean, you can you can I mean, you can make it accessible, but you know, that's not how most corporations work or the ones who can do this. Um, that's why I said the house of the future is more of a sustainable angle more than a technological one. But because it doesn't cost as much money it's, it's stuff that you can actually use we already have access to the, the original house of the future was designed for that for uh to be inexpensive well but nobody's done it <laughs> yeah nobody i mean they had a special interest in this but um it was <laughs> i was watching a video and, and, and it practically said that when it debuted yeah I like mean, two three the, years later the the thing about the thing about doing these things is they never considered the economics of things <laughs> They didn't consider a lot of shit. That's the bottom line. Because in, in this house, it was like, they did it. A lot of people went to see it. I think it says five or six years later, or four years later, um, it became the house of the present because everyone like caught up with a lot of things that these guys wanted to make the future just because they wanted to use plastic, but everyone was using plastic already. So they remodeled it a little bit, just a little bit, And eventually they tore it down. And they have another um, House of the Future in Disney right now that's way more futuristic. But with the time, it's, it's becoming the house of the present again. I mean, it's 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 changing too fast. Yeah. It's changing too fast. And, and some of it, from what I saw, is more like, a, wouldn't it be cool if? Not like, wouldn't it be better if? It was more like cool. Wouldn't it be cool to have... Uh, TV screens and the, and the dinner table. Yeah, that's not yeah, practical. A lot of stuff is just bullshit. Or futuristic at all. <laughs> it's that's just bullshit. Just, that's just you. You have a, a TV addiction if you if you need that. Yeah. And then four, one for each one. Jesus Christ. But um, they did get a few things right from this thing. It was uh, the they got the the. What's it called? The new thermostats. The, Nest. Uh, yeah, that one. They did kind of predict it on this one that you could control the every room independently and blah 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 blah. Um, well, I really, I really like that era. I think it's full of wonder, and I don't think that's that's here anymore. It is here, <laughs> but it's 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 it, in in. I, it's, I mean, it's, it's more realistic. It's, now. it's more extensive. It's more. It's all over the place now. 
back then was more condensed. People didn't have access to so much information. Now the information is everywhere. Now it's a matter of, damn, I get some information. I'm telling you this because I do this stuff. I'm, I'm, I have my, I have a, you know, for years and years I've built a, a very large intelligence network for myself. So it's very difficult for me not to have my, my hand on something or my eye on something and not know about something. <laughs> I'm gonna miss a bunch of stuff, but most of the stuff I know I've built a, a good network to. You know, if I don't have it right now, I will eventually get it, get information or or get an insight. And the information is out there. The problem is, is that now too many people have access to the same information, and what you see is a lot of the same stuff. It's a lot yeah. of der derivative of ideas. It's not like that guy just not giving a shit and <laughs> and you know. Now it's more about if somebody puts something out there, it's kind of like they want to be more right than wrong. <laughs> yeah, that's that's really what's happening. That's why you, that's why you don't see a more. But you there's a lot of the stuff you know people talking about this stuff, but it's more it's just more of the same stuff. It's not like one really really. I mean, like like the thing about like Elon Musk, the Hyperloop thing. The reason it became so big is because nobody ever was even thinking about those things. But he brought it out. He's well known. But that, and that bam. That's what I what I mean. I mean that it happened like, really fast. It happened really fast. That's something that that's crazy. It's out there. Yeah, it's futuristic. He's he's someone that's willing to to bet his balls on something. Yeah, that's, he, he puts that, his money. That's where, that's where that's, that's, the, that's the big difference. There's a not, there's not a lot of people who are willing to to bet their balls and have the resources to to do it like like Bill Gates, like like Lena Musk. Um, like Jeff Bezos, yada yada yada. That's that's another difference from that era to today. Back then, there weren't a bunch of billionaires all over the place who were willing to upend upend industries. Today, there are. <laughs> yeah, but for example, that thing there, the Hyperloop, um, that gets me excited. That's like, oh, that's something in the future that I'm looking forward to. Yeah. But then there's a, like the Nest thing that's supposedly the thermostat of the future, or whatever. But that to me is like a, they just made it better. It's not out there. It's not it's like just, oh yeah. my god, it's the future. I'm yeah, seeing no, it's, it's the future. It's just incremental stuff. Yeah, it's incremental. It's an update. So, it's so, an update. Yeah, it's an update. So I mean, that's what I'm missing. I, I'm missing the 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 hyperloop thing. That yeah. you're gonna be able to travel from here to here really fast. I mean, I'm still thinking about the motion sickness and all that stuff of how they're gonna handle it. <laughs> Because and oh, a crash, you don't even want to see what what happens when you crash at that speed. But it's very exciting. That I I need the excitement. Yeah, I mean, I think things. I think also that the other thing is that a lot of the technology is is more you know shifted to other places like, uh, for example, AI. <laughs> you know, virtual stuff, augmented stuff. Um, you know. Uh, social stuff, you know, it's it's shifted towards that than you know more physical, what they call the you know the competition between atoms and bits. In this case, atoms are life stuff, okay. and bits are technology, you know, things on digital. So it's 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 very hard to do bit stuff. I mean, um, atom stuff, <laughs> um, than tech, you know, than you know, bit stuff. That's why you see more push towards these digital mediums than, you know, all the the other stuff, because this stuff takes more more time and more more costs more money. Like I was I was reading this uh, article yesterday about mining. Um, I mean I've read about mining before, but never at length about how the mining industry works. And the the, the reason why I'm talking about mining is because it's it's about mining copper. So technology depends on copper. <laughs> at the end of the day. You know these things are phones. The things are the things that we use every day. You know, in terms of technology, they're all based on copper <laughs> to a certain degree. So we have to we need more copper. That's 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 what's happening. So the way the mining industry works is that it's it's very capital intensive. You have to spend billions and billions of dollars one time, and then see that return maybe twice or three times that in about 10 years or more. And and that's how that industry works. That's that's atoms. <laughs> so I was thinking, well, what's the innovation in that industry to to do that? But I was as as I was thinking about, it, I was like, wow, I mean, this is really cuz I mean, 
pe- people get killed in that industry for do to do mining. Yeah. So I mean, it's 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 very like what I'm trying to say is all these things are connected in some way, and one depends on the other, <laughs> especially if it's if it's atom based. If it's bit based, like technology, internet, everything's moving very very fast. Like the internet, like I, I know this guy had an example on there that um, he didn't talk about the internet. But when we were talking about the internet back in the 80s, when DARPA did this thing, Pip, you know, the, the whole uh, promise of the internet was that people had more access to information and would learn more and all these utopian views. Um, at, to a certain point, we, we do have that, but they, they didn't foresee the people's behavior towards that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, you know, they didn't foresee that the internet is actually making us stupid in it. Stupid too, <laughs> because as more people have more access to the same information, they become more biased, they become less open to new ideas, and they form their circles of 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 you know hanging around the same people. And the they same use ideas. It, they use it for nothing. For nothing to send emoji emojis to themselves. And yeah, with <laughs> and they don't even turn the auto character on. Yeah, I mean, so so a lot of these things, um, you know. You, it's, it's, it's a good exercise to do to predict what not, but at the end of the day, it's like that saying, you know, every, everybody has a plan and, until they get, you know, hit in, in the face. <laughs> <laughs> and usually the face has to do with the human element, so, uh, and, and other factors. That's why, you know, these types of ideas, the, the house of the future, I mean, what exactly is that? I don't know, like, for, like I was saying, for me, the house of the future now has to do more with sustainability than technological wizardry. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Why? Because we are killing our planet. <laughs> what it used to me is to have more technological wizardry in my home. And by the way, there is there is an article, I think it was on the Smithsonian, I read like two or three months ago, where they talk about the house of the future and, and, and a tech companies creating this. And it has to do, they're mixing technological wizardry with the sustainable angle. So, have you heard about this? The, the Paris yeah, I saw. City? Yeah, I saw. I heard that. You know what they're doing? Something and like that. What I heard? No, it's different. But I know what Spain is doing right now is they are uh, uh, building their, you know, or basically their, their buildings now. They are implementing like these um, ways for plants to grow on the buildings, like if it were a beard, mm-hmm. because of the of the climate. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, and a lot of places are banning cars too. Yeah. So see, so you know, so so that's like kind of the things that. When you're making predictions, you don't foresee. They like those guys didn't foresee. Um, you know, they were thinking about the smart home or the do- the home with the dome. They didn't foresee that we would bust our balls. You know, fucking themselves up the ass with climate change. Um, that changed the direction of everything. <laughs> because now it's about how do we make our living more sustainable, not more technological wizardry. <laughs> it's more like a nice to have, but does do we really need that? Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, and there was another one about uh, controlling the weather too. Yeah, uh, <laughs> let you know, check out. See if you can see smart. Just put in Google, put smart home, and Smithsonian. Smithsonian. Cause that that one's a cool one. That was like, just go to the articles. Yeah, I, it, it's right there. What's like to live in the smart energy? That's the one. See what they're saying there. They don't. They're not pitching technological wizardry. They're saying smart, but they're saying energy efficient home of the future. <laughs> That's the one. This one. Yeah. It looks. Uh, <clears throat> it looks pretty. Are you, you're gonna. You're gonna yeah, link it, but right? But that's not the point of the the outside. The point is what's inside. That's all connected and it's all controlled. You know, for energy efficiency. So that's what I mean by by, and it also has this, um, you know, the thermostat, and all the stuff, you know. But that's not the point. Like wh- what you see there in that image mm-hmm. of the, it looks like the outside. <laughs> so it's controlling like the it's controlling like the internal weather, and also the lighting, based on on. So wait, is it? Hold on. See, LED lights are programmed to mimic the chance in color, the change in color and warmth of natural light. They are white and bright in the morning. <laughs> okay, and they are... At night, the lightning yellow and warm. Hmm. 
What's this? And collects, yeah, and collects energy and, and other data from the home's occupants. For three years. Yeah, now that's just something else. Honda is doing this? Yep. Yeah, I mean, and I think the world is heading to, to you can you can link this article yeah. for, the, for the people see, who are but, listening. See, but that's what I mean why, by by making the predictions. Like This is where the, where everything's going right now. Yeah. You see uh, architect uh, blocks and all that stuff. This is where, where it's going. See, but the point is that the guy, the guy who was doing those comics in the 50s, late 50s, he didn't foresee climate change. <laughs> I mean, you know what I mean? <laughs> so there, that's that's the problem with predictions. There's a lot of things that we can foresee, and as and as as far as we start looking out, the I mean, the worse our prediction is gonna be. So <laughs> we're still talking about smart homes now, but the definition of a smart home has completely changed. Yeah. <laughs> See, and that's that's the thing. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean the the thing about the. My whole my, my whole thing about predictions, when people ask me for predictions, is, you know, predictions don't have to be true. What they, what matters is they get people thinking. That's 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 what it's about. Because um, I like even I have friends on on my Twitter, you know, Twitter followers that'll if I tweet something about like like the beginning of the year, every year everybody starts like towards the end of the year and at the beginning of the year everybody starts writing articles about predictions for 2016 or two, predictions for 2017, and all this mumbo jumbo. And then, you know, people start retweeting that and, you know, sharing it. And, you know, more than a handful of times, if I shared something about that, people would come back to me and say, oh, you can't predict the future. They start telling me because they, they know me as an innovation guy. So what am I doing tweeting about, you know, stuff, predictions, yeah. right? And I say, I know, it's, but it's good to think, to have these things just to think about, not to take them as a given. <laughs> I mean, don't take them as yeah, a given. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Just use them to think about. And as long as, as it's kind of like a short-term view, you know, pay more attention to it. But if it's a longer chain view, I mean, most likely that thing's going to be wrong. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and that's just how it is. <laughs> yeah, I mean, basically out of 42, 42 things, they maybe, got like maybe one five or, two, or two, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, that, and then, but yeah, I mean, that's, that's how it works. Um, so, I mean, anybody makes predictions nowadays, it's, you know, take it like a grain of salt. Just read it, you know, consume it and think about it, but don't, you know, take as a given that because Microsoft put out a report that the five predictions of yada yada yada, you know, like IBM does this every year. They release this report about their next predictions for the next year or the next five years. And when you start doing the list, you start accumulating the ones from the years past and you start accumulating. And it's very funny because most of these things are short term. <laughs> They're not like 50 years out. They're like five, 10 years. So I mean, <laughs> you know, consume those. <laughs> those those are good to think about, but the uh, the ones that are nutty ones like um, like computers taking over our jobs, you know, tomorrow. <laughs> someday. That's gonna happen. Yeah, it will happen. Someday. But not all. Not not gonna happen in one fell swoop. <laughs> it's happening right now, but it's not gonna happen in one fell swoop. Like like. Bam, and then suddenly everybody's out of a job. <laughs> It'll happen incrementally. Um, but, um, but yeah. Um, and like the example you were putting about the guy that wants to be a tech guy and he has no idea like about the future, he's wasting his time. <laughs> yeah, that's his dream, but I mean... I yeah, but if he has know. no idea, if he's not even thinking about it, I mean, he's just... He's just... Uh, just playing around. <laughs> yeah, it's as it says if someone asks me, hey, what do you want to do when you grow up? Oh, I want to make films. Oh, what kind of films? I don't know, just films. Do you, uh, do you have any stories in mind? Uh, no, I just want to make films. That's my dream job. <laughs> yeah. It's like, really? Dude, come on. You know, I, I, you know one, one way to, to look at these things is that if you are an investor, what would you expect in your next business plans? If you if you invest in technology, technology based stuff, well, number one, you expect expect the business plan with AI something in there, <laughs> and big data, because if you if you don't have that, somebody's not thinking through these things. <laughs> it's very simple, yeah. At least for the next ten years, a lot of businesses are gonna have to or or, you know, 
you know, startups are going to have something in their, in, their, in their plan that has AI in there. So, but that's how it works. Um, you have anything else to add? No, that's it. All right. So, I mean, the, the bottom line is that, you know, you have to be, you know, it's, again, predictions don't have to be true. They just have to make people think. So, uh, be open to unpredictability. And, you know, if you guys have visions of the future you want to share with us, let's, let's do that. Um, you know, future thinking is healthy. <laughs> um, yeah, it also helps you be creative. Yeah. I guess you just, that's what we try to do on this podcast, you know, think about what's possible. We're not making any predictions. We're just saying, you look, this is, this is something interesting to think through, you know, what could happen. And then we put it out there and, you know, it helps us be smarter also. <laughs> yeah. Not start believing our, bull, our own bullshit. <laughs> um, but yeah. Um, all right, guys, well, uh, we'll talk to you next week and, uh, you know, have fun. <laughs>